Hey guys, welcome to DreamCoin, where we show how to invest for a better tomorrow. My name is Tyler, and today we're going to be going over NRX Pharmaceuticals and some big news and speculative stuff coming out of the Ukraine, as well as some of their developments in seeking more authorization, both in the US and globally, for their COVID treatment. So for anybody that's unfamiliar with NRX Pharma or NRXP as they trade under, they are a pharmaceutical company that is specializing in things that deal with lung distress and COVID-19 more specifically during their recent stuff that they've been developing. But they also work with trying to do bipolar depression treatments and aiding people that are having acute suicidality and different things that would pertain to those. A vast majority of their treatments on their pipelines are going to be phase two or phase three and this sets them up to possibly go for fda submissions at some point in the near future for all of these different types of things now for anybody unaware nrxp has only been trading on nasdaq for a small period of time they recently went public through an spac listing with big rock partners acquisition core and this was back towards the end of may which was basically the perfect timeline for them to get a lot of this data out for their covid treatment and everything like that and this coincides coincided with me saying that they had a possible reversal play inbound after they ran around June 15th from some positive data that they put out for their treatment of Viptodil that is being used for COVID patients. When I alerted them, this was around July 20th and they were about $10.37. Once I put out that listing a couple days later, they ended up burning a ton and this was just being from very oversold on this positive data news where it trended them up above 10 to $15 for a significant amount of time where they fluctuated in that range and then steadily slowed down and sold off until they had more news come out in July. The data in general looks very promising, even as far back as June, where 65% of the patients given a Viptodil that were in ICU were alive at 28 days. And the survival with this treatment pathway as compared to the traditional ventilation route that a lot of COVID patients have been seeing was a survival rate of 76% versus 54%. The expanded access protocol data that they got from 240 of these ICU patients is being used for their filings with the US FDA to possibly go for full FDA approval down the road, I would imagine. But the first steps were in their company to gain EUA so that it could be used in emergency use situations pertaining to COVID. One of the big things that could possibly give them a boost over the next few weeks, especially if they get more news coming out that looks very significant, is that they gained a partnership with Mankind Corporation to develop inhalers for respiratory conditions, specifically with COVID-19. And they've already got the fast track designation by the FDA, allowing for them to go along a easier path to get full approval and get the treatment out to people that need it. Along with studying the clinical effects of Avipadil and how they can adapt those, they are now also trying to adapt the treatment to be able to be sitting in room temperature in a delivery system that's convenient not only for patients, but for hospitals in all kinds of different cases, which would obviously be huge since, you know, one of the main concerns with the vaccines before was how volatile they could be if they weren't refrigerated or held in certain conditions. And so this could just bring up a higher efficiency for everything in general. I'm going to bring up this old May 26th article from them because it's going to be significant for some of the speculation we're going to be bringing to the stock going into this upcoming week because they have had some interesting news coming out around the world for compassion use for the drug, but also in a setting that could possibly fast track it for being one of the main ways of treatment in other countries. So this was a deal for NRXP to work work with the Luger Institute and Chromos Pharma to work on lead development of COVID-19 medicines in Central Europe. And this allowed for them to have partnerships to work with countries like Georgia, Hungary, and Ukraine for the phase three development of Avipadil for COVID-19. This coincides with them literally on June 27th, noting that they got emergency use authorization in the nation of Georgia, which allows for them to use this drug in emergency situations and for people that feel like they don't have any other treatment options left. What is going to be significant for this is that the Minister of Health of Ukraine, Viktor Lyashko, basically just came out and said today that they are getting deals with manufacturing companies to get more COVID treatments, specifically, more interestingly, that are in the third stage of clinical trials here in the US. Now, if you pull up this article, this article was written in Russian, but you can still translate it if you have like Google Chrome or something, which is why I'm able to kind of pick out some of the information here, albeit one 
one or, one or two of the words might be off here and there with translation. But the phrasing of this seems very significant, especially with you pair it with the fact that uh, they had collaboration efforts with the ministries of health of Georgia, Hungary, and Ukraine. And Georgia's already enacted on this. And while it's not entirely fact, we can use reasonable speculative strategies to assume that Ukraine could be talking about NRXP specifically as a treatment due to their prior agreements to work with the development of COVID-19 vaccines and the fact that they specifically stated they were in phase three trials, which if we reference back here on the NRX Pharma website, you can see that their COVID trials are all within the phase three area. This all kind of supports a hypothesis that NRXP could become one of the main COVID treatments in Europe, especially with the other treatments going through Europe becoming a little more frail in the fact that there's a lot more pushback against getting vaccinated from a lot of the people there, particularly countries like France and stuff. And we have a large case where more options are needed so that a lot more things can be analyzed. Side effects can be analyzed. And the more that we can get data out on treatments that have minimal side effects, the more likely it is that people would get vaccinated. As we look as far back as July 20th, when I had originally started looking at the company, you can see they were on a very low end for the trading period that they were at. And then they ended up running almost 300% within the course of three days up to that $30 area. And that was alongside just different news catalysts, more interest in the stock. I believe as of right now, the insider ownership on this is about like 70%. And so that's a huge support basis for what can hold the stock up long term. I believe a lot of those shares are locked up due to the SPAC deal that went through. And so that would give a potential like six month timeline for when that was finalized from until they can actually sell that restricted stock. As we hover more here, it obviously cooled off some, had a couple more spikes itself where it went down as low as 16 and then jumped over 20 again. And then it's been consolidating here underneath this $17 area and around the $14 area. The bottom support I'm seeing right now is roughly about $13. Uh, more specifically about like 1320, but that's kind of just logistics with higher volatility in stocks. And if it can bounce out of this channel, especially going into Monday, August 9th, we could be seeing a rise where if it can break through this 1412, we could reclaim the support and I'd be seeing it riding through this channel for here if it doesn't get huge moves early in the day. If it does get huge moves early in the day and can break or possibly test the 1744 area, consolidate and move upwards, we could be seeing a movement that would raise them back into the 20s, which would be fairly significant for the next day or two of trading that would happen on the market. Long term for me on the stock, especially with what they're doing with their respiratory route for treatment of COVID, which is a little bit different from what's currently being given, we could be seeing a possibility of where long term the stock is an easy $40, $50. I mean, they've already been $30 at this point, just on some very minimal like news, just emergency use authorization organizations and data for their treatment that would provide for a possible success story in the treatments of COVID alongside the variants that are popping up. And so I think a $50 price target for me on the stock would not be unreasonable in the slightest going into the next six months to a year, especially if they get more stuff coming out that they have more emergency use authorizations in other countries. It possibly gets more notoriety to where it becomes one of the main treatments in Europe. And then the fast track program in the US gets them as one of the main developed drugs that is helping to treat COVID with more serious conditions here in the United States. I don't see too much downside from investing in current levels here, even at 13, where it was higher than this nine to $10 area. I think if we look at the VWAP RSI, which is basically just an RSI based on volume weighted average price rather than previous closing prices, it was trending into both Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of last week with very significant oversold regions. And even with those oversold areas, it's basically been kind of of consolidating in this area, like I said. So coming out of this news over the weekend, we have that they're number one trending on Yahoo Finance as well right now, I assume because people are looking at the stock with the news being circulated on social media for some of the stuff with considering that they've got news circulating on social media that deals in the compassion and emergency use authorizations in other countries for this treatment. This could be a nice rise for them going into the next week, let alone the next few months. Short term, these are definitely going to be 
levels you want to look for if for some reason the news doesn't react how we want it to going into the next week or two with the stuff coming out this weekend we could see it bottoming out down towards this 10 to 11 dollar area so i'd keep an eye on that if it does break through this uh a roughly like 13 dollar region but if it stays above this and keeps bouncing and is able to start retaining more and more key support levels we could be seeing very nice movement on the stock over the next longer period of time i just wanted to get some info out on this stock for you guys because nrxp has been seeming very interesting since i initially found them as a reversal play short term and the more i look into them the more they look like a very nice long-term option for you as well so anybody new to the channel make sure you like and subscribe i'd love to hear your feedback on the video and hopefully i'll see you on future ones as well other than that i'll catch you guys in the next one and i'll see you peace